Hello! Welcome to the Academy Round 3 at Hockenheim National Layout. We are here with just nine drivers on the field. Uh, basically, the, the news was a couple of people signed out, which is always, you know, always happens. Uh, and two people did have some internet connection issues that prevented them from being able to compete. Unfortunately, one of those was debuting Liam Curtin. Hopefully, I'll get to sit down with him and figure out if we can solve his connection issues because he was constantly pinging up to 500 and, you know, getting the boot, which is not so good. Uh, with me on commentary for this event is returning after his brand's hatch appearance, Paul Riccobeni. Hey, hello everyone. Excited to be here for another round of the Academy, Mike. Uh, so what are you expecting here from this Hockenheim National Circuit? Uh, this is actually, um, well, uh, it's a long circuit, but it, it's kind of fun. Uh, there's a couple of really good passing zones in here. So I'm expecting to see quite a bit of action. I have no idea what happened. So I'm hoping for some good racing, to be honest with you. Excellent. Excellent. So we've got a lot of our new usual faces here. Rochelle Guerin currently holding pole position ahead of Zach Hemstrom and Gustav Ekstrom. The Swedish duo. Uh, Javi Perez Torres, Daniel Hernandez, James Butler, Joel Wilstein, Tobias Howard. Uh, the ninth guy, who does not have a lap time up yet, will be the freshly squeezed one himself, John Picha. So he will be on the way as well. Anyone to keep an eye on in your eye there, Paul? Anyone that you are expecting for perhaps a bit of a breakout performance from? Uh, yeah, I keep waiting, um, you know, Javi. Um, he won one of the races, uh, Brands Hatch. I know he has some speed in him. I think it's just a consistency issue. So I'm waiting to see him just put it all together and uh, start moving his way a little closer to the front of the pack on a more regular basis. I know he can do it. Uh, my interesting guy for the day is Daniel Hernandez. This is his, just his second Academy race, and the Zanfort race kind of led me to believe he was kind of like on his best behavior like you know new guy on the field making yeah, sure not I to hit anybody yeah that that was actually very smart driving it was very smart driving but i'm i'm hoping to see like a tad more aggression from him in this race we'll see it'll be interesting i mean we know that garen and henshin are going to be fast extra right these are givens <laughs> so i'll be really curious to see how um, the rest of the field does here indeed so Rochelle with a 35.5. Now, notably, I think that's actually faster than her leaderboard time. Because I think her leaderboard time was only a 35.7, if memory serves. Now, she may have topped it since, so, yeah, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, but it is I, possible. I believe, I believe at the time this was this was a personal best for her, so it's very nice to see on server conditions. I don't have a lot of um, time in after the uh, physics update from Race Room, um, but I know that... For me, at least, to the few laps I did, there was a pretty dramatic difference in um, grip feel between leaderboard and the an actual uh, server. There so, definitely does appear to be that as the case. Yeah, I mean, maybe she's able... To, to me, you could feel the tires more on a server than you could in a leaderboard. So maybe that's uh, coming into play here. Could be, could be. Uh, just a quick recap for everyone. These are, of course, the ESR Academy drivers. They are the... Not necessarily the worst drivers we have, because, to be honest... I'm not going to name any names, but there, there are some people that uh, I'd like to see in the academy, and they're not here. Um, but these are the you know people who are newer to the to the hobby or haven't put a lot of time in over the time they've been here, or there's maybe even some physical limitations or technical limitations that lead to them being slightly sloppier, less consistent, less fast drivers. And we put them here, and we do our best to try to bring out the best that they can be, which is of course different for every driver. So, like, the ceiling for, like, a Zach Hempstrom, who's, like, putting a lot of money into hardware and stuff and putting a lot of time into the hobby, probably significantly higher than, say, Toby Howard, who has, you know, family to deal with and so on. So, there's, you know, we're not expecting the same from everybody, but we are just looking for improvements as we go along. And yep. uh, they will graduate slowly. We've uh, some famous graduates of our academy include Josiah Jerome, who has graduated, Nathan Edward, Christopher Streppen, are some of the top runners in uh, ESR regular series. So we've had a pretty good time with some of this. You can see the starting grid there. Pretty short. Uh, only nine cars, like we said. So hopefully we see a little bit of an improvement because uh, one driver was kicked out of the academy after this for not signing out of races he wasn't attending. So hopefully we don't have to do that again. 
Oh, somebody was a bad boy. Uh, the car we are using is the BMW M235i. Uh, it is a production cup car. And we are forming up the grid here, so I'll try to wrap this up as quick as I can. These are uh, cars that are low holders power to ton ratio, so they're not, they're not terribly powerful. Uh, but it does keep the grid together and encourages an exploration of like safe yet uh, competitive driving. Yeah, you know me. I'm a fan for even slower cars for the kind of stuff, but... It's not really an ideal one available at this time. Sadly. I know, I know. It's a shame. I can't believe there's no MX-5 in this game. The MX-5 would be nice. I mean, there's the Audi TTs, which are slower than this, but that brings you to a whole like front-wheel drive thing, which does add some extra complications. 100%. All right, so here we go, focusing on Javi Perez as the lights are red, 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 and we are off. All right, uh, come on, do it. Bit of a bad start there by Gustav. He did not get off the line very well. He is carrying that extra 100 kilos of ballast, so it's possible that really is just all that is. Uh, Rochelle Guerin has maintained the lead into the first corner ahead of Zach Hemstrom, Javi Perez Torres in third, and rounding off the top five, that is Daniel Hernandez in the champion car from last season. Nice awesome. clean start from everyone. Uh, Javi made a bit of a mistake there, and that's allowed bit. Gustav to kind of cruise up alongside of him. Uh, Toby Howard off in the back there. He's going to lose his spot. So side by side here into this corner, as far as I know, doesn't have a name. I just call it the shortcut hairpin. And, uh, oh, oh, Daniel Hernandez off. Didn't look like anyone touched him. It looked like he no. just kind of slid off. Yeah, I think he just went in too hot, and rear came around on him. So Ekstrom got Javi P and has moved up to third place. James Butler to fifth. John Peach to sixth. Uh, Hernandez has rejoined ahead of Toby Howard. So the two of them and Joel Wilson are following the fire falling back. So here is Hemstrom versus Garen. This was kind of the Battle of the Titans uh, that we were expecting at this track. Uh, also, we were hoping that Douglas DeGroat would be here to be kind of mixing it up with these two because he was actually the fastest on the leaderboard, but unfortunately he was one of those sidelined by technical issues. Oh, that's a bummer. Indeed. He was a race winner at Zamborg too, so it would have been nice to see if he could follow up on that momentum. Oh, uh -huh. Off in the background. Um, so, the keys to getting a good lap at Hockenheim are honestly using the, all the track, which Javi may have taken a little too long. <laughs> yes, there's all the track, and then there's uh, a little too much track. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the track limits here are pretty generous, and there are a couple of corners that you absolutely have to abuse that to get a perfect lap. And here we are heading into the German Parabolica. That's apparently what this like straightaway here is called. A little bit of fragmentation on the video. That's not good. Check it out. I didn't uh, get that at all. Okay, maybe it's just one. All right, so Rochelle continues to hold the lead through the shortcut, and Ekstrom and Hemstrom, the uh, two uh, Swede drivers, are on her tail. Uh, Javi's kind of on his own now, which is a little disappointing. He's definitely got the pace over these two cars, James Butler and John Peach, but. Uh, can't seem to stay with the front runners. Consistency, Javi. Consistency. Uh, Daniel Hernandez, after sliding off the track, is now on the tail of Joel Wilstein. Uh, something we're trying to get Joel to work on is being a little bit actually more aggressive because Joel has been a little too passive. And it's in a way that almost honestly kind of even throws people off. Uh, you, you were there, of course, at the uh, Zoo High race where someone started on pole and tried to let everyone through and it caused all kinds of mayhem, if I recall correctly. I recall that exact <laughs> situation, yes. I the best know. thing to do is go as fast as you can in a forward motion. Indeed. So John Peach on the tail of James Butler, who is struggling with that ballast a little bit. We've been noticing he's having to take really long lines into corners, corners and I'm kind of wondering if that's a... A side effect of the ballast he's carrying, or if that's a lack of understanding of the track, I'm a, I'll be interested to explore what that, uh, what's, uh, what, which that is. Yeah, I'm gonna try and keep an eye on his lines a little bit. I mean, you know, like you said before, the ballast on this car, it's a heavy car, so it's, it's not like it's gonna completely 
change the handling char characteristics of it. Maybe he's just pushing a little too much. Maybe, maybe. We, we had that talk at Zanford about how he was going into the first turn, like, a little bit wide. It was, like, kind of baiting people to dive bomb them, which puts yourself in a bit of a dangerous uh, position if that's something you're doing lap after lap. Yeah, I wonder what, um, I wonder, like you said, if it's just a, a lack of track knowledge or if he's using um, leaderboard lines. Oh! Zach Hempstrom trying to go down the inside Looking. of the Zach's curb, but I That's think nice Rochelle's going to hold that. Uh, the problem with going down the inside of Zach's curve is there's a pretty good traction on the outside, so the car you're trying to pass still gets a pretty good run out of the corner. This whole final section from that corner to this that final corner right there, I struggle with it. It's really, to me, it's very tricky. I found that the difficulty, honestly, was that I couldn't really ever find visual track markers. It was a lot of breaking by, like, feel, which is always going to lead to a lot of, like, variance. Absolutely. And this corner, which is uh, turn two right here, mm -hmm. man, if you get this right, you can gain so much time. <sighs> Little squeeze. Yeah, definitely, but she's protecting her uh, her lines. And that has let that has let Gustav Ekstrom have a run on the... Uh, the immigrant Swede, so the battle and between between the native and the uh, the. Javi's not too far in the background with these three battling up there. I'm expecting to see him back into this. John Peach making a little bit of a mistake. But that's the balance of the car. Anyway, oh, looks like Gustav has got around the outside of the shortcut and into second place. Uh, I'm calling it the shortcut. I suppose I should I should explain that. Uh, obviously, there's the Hockenheim Grand Prix layout that uh, turn there is kind of what shortens it into the national layout. So that's kind of what I mean when I say shortcut. Uh, Gustav Ekstrom now will try to go after Michelle Garrett and we'll see if he has any better luck than Zach. Although Zach pulled a, pulled alongside, so I don't think I don't think Zach's out of this equation yet. Oh, no, there's nine minutes to go. These three are all basically running the same laps. And Javi's right there now, so that's good. This is what we're hoping to see from these guys. This is something, good, clean racing right here. Something must have happened to Daniel Hernandez as he's at the back. Oh, why? Down to the pit lane. Going into the pit. So, there, so that was wondered in the chat, and what it was is that her wheel had failed at this point, and the oh, force feedback had stopped. No. So she's going into the pit lane so that she can, you know, cruise around and fix the wheel, and hopefully not have that problem in race two or three. Oh, that's such a bummer. She was running great, too. She was running great. Well, oh, John Peachy going down the inside of James Butler. Butler manages to defend. There's Rochelle in the background looking for her pit stop. Um, I'm not sure what happened with her wheel. I might, uh, Next time I'm over that way, I'll take a look at it and see if maybe there's a, there's a part that needs to be replaced or something. It's such a frustrating part of this hobby. It's just... Oh, Zach going for the lead. Goes. He's got the inside in the shortcut. Will he manage to hold it? I think he will, but it does give Gustav a good defensive line here into the next turn, which is Mercedes' curve. And it does allow him to hold the position. I would just like to give both of those guys a ton of credit right there. That's exactly what we'd like to see. They side by side. Nobody bumped each other. They left room for each other. That was good hard racing. Nice. Indeed, I was very impressed. With oh, little, little touch there. Yeah, touch. Put that nose in a little hard, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. It's probably probably about the limit you want to be in aggression. That's, that's okay. I agree. So Overall, Javi, though, this is good racing. So we got the Swedes running 1-2 with Javi Perez-Torres, James Butler, and John Peachy rounding off the top five. Uh, we'd like to welcome Daniel Hernandez, by the way, to the uh, the grid for the 3D Speed Series, which he has joined uh, Cabron's. Hey, welcome. Zach Hemstrom trying to go down the inside of turn one. Nothing doing there. I'm not really sure if you can make an overtake work at that first turn terribly well without a major mistake. That corner is tough enough by yourself. I would never try and make a move there. I mean, there's, always, there's, there's no turn that I would never try to make a move. But there's a definitive uh, odd set of variables that I need yeah. to really think about that as a serious opportunity. So, Javi, what I'm gonna I keep watching him. He's right there, but he keeps making mistakes. All he's got to do is just settle down. These two are gonna battle 
non-stop you know right now it's so easy to just stay patient and just get right in the tail wait for one of them to open the door and then he can go from third to first if he just stays calm good overtake there from john peacha but i think it might have been a little bit ballast assisted uh butler's coming back at him but uh this is kind of a replay of the hamstrom extra move and hey, uh it ballast looks, or not that was uh, nice butler has got a butler with a brave move to get that spot back good work james yeah that was impressive I've been I've been very critical of James uh, racing it's at times, and uh, it's it's good to see him pull off moves like that real clean, real smooth, aggressive but not overly aggressive. That's the key. I'm impressed with everything I've seen so far in this race. Indeed. So it looks like we're go we got the battle for the lead. We got the battle for fourth place, and then I guess Will Steen. Uh, well, no, Will Steen's got Hernandez chasing him, so there's a battle going on for sixth as well. And then Howard and Garen are kind of on their own. Very disappointing about Garen. Actually, Howard's still here. There he is. So, Will yeah. Steen, Hernandez, Howard, still relatively close together. Even um, Picha, he's driving great. I mean, we know Butler's got some speed, and even with the ballast, you know, John's right there. He's doing mm -hmm. really good today. Let's see if Hemstrom can get a move here. He's setting up for the outside of Parabolic. I don't really think that that's going to work into the shortcut. So yeah, that's a tough should move. Be, should be extra pertaining. Oh, well, wait, wait, switch back. Not quite wide enough. So Javi doing a good job of keeping up. But, yeah, we, we have seen a series of just small mistakes. From Bobby, you know, just kind of iron out. Yeah, they're totally on four. Pichu going up the inside and should have the spot there. Because he'll, there get, a better, he'll get a better nice ride page. out of that corner. And John Pichu up to fourth place. Uh, John Pichu, I do believe, the uh, the ultimate veteran of the academy now. I think he has the most academy starts. Which, on one hand, it's a little bit, uh, it does say a little bit that maybe his development hasn't been as quick as we'd like it to be. But at the same time, it shows great patience and a desire to learn. Absolutely. And as you know, again, the whole point here is just improving, right? And I think John's definitely doing that over the seasons. Absolutely. Everyone is going to progress to a degree at their own rate. So no one should really be compared to anybody. That's true. It's impossible. I mean, there's just so many variables. Yeah, no person is completely identical. You got the hardware, you got the internet, you got the time that you can put in, the physical ability. There's just too many variables to really set like hard and fast goals. Absolutely. I know I put in probably way too many hours. And some people are lucky if they can get half an hour in a week. So the battle for the lead continues. Uh, we'll see if Butler can keep with Peacher, but it looks like John is pulling away a little bit. Stretching his legs. It's nice to see. No offense to uh, Butler. Just good to see John putting some good laps in. We are down to about 2 minutes 45 seconds remaining in the race. That'll probably be about 2 to maybe 3 laps. And just depending on where the leader comes across the line, that sort of thing. Uh, Alright, so I'm taking the assumption that Javi's been watching these two go at it for 4 laps now. He has a plan formulated. And he knows exactly where Hentrum's going to try and make a move, and that's when he's going to pounce on these two. Absolutely. Ekstrom showing off how that ballast doesn't really limit you, though, leading the race despite having that extra 100 kilos. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's running a full 100. What's uh, Hemstrom got? Hemstrom has zero, uh, although Hemstrom's performances might start to work some ballast. At the start of the season, we did not see him as a ballast driver. He has done very, very well at both Brands Hatch and Zanvort. And again, here at Hockenheim, he is going for the lead now up the inside of Hex of Ekstrom. He should have an easy run through this turn. And indeed, he does into the lead of the race. Yeah, Gustav left that way too open. Hmm. He had to be a little more uh, defensive going in there. We'll see if Javi can maybe capitalize on that next time through because he's got one more run through that corner. So he might be able to make a move off of it. It's the second to last lap. Uh, one more lap after this. Uh, just looking down to see uh, Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Howard have both made an overtake on Joel Wilson. So perhaps a mistake from Joel, which is 
dropped him back to 8th place. And, uh, everyone else is where we last left them. Let's see if Javier can make something happen here. He can improve upon it. Javier's got two wins to his name, so he's been doing quite well. Oh! Pushes Gustav out pretty hard, and into the barrier they go. I think that's giving the win to Hemstrom. Mm, that's an unfortunate mistake. Uh, Rochelle Guerin on her comeback through the field with her pit stop. She's on the tail of that is Joel Wills. Let's see if she can wrestle eight spot and try to limit the damage here. On the bright side, she's going to have a front row start for race number two, and hopefully she can turn that into a big result. Yeah, I mean, that's going to give her a, uh, a giant head start over um, Hemstrom and Ekstrom, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to be at the back of the pack. Yeah, eighth, uh, eighth and ninth, yeah. So. Well, so even after that um, off, Ekstrom and Torres uh, were able to keep second and third? Mm hmm. Looks like. Oh, very lucky. Very lucky that John Peach and uh, Butler, I think, had, had delayed themselves a little bit with their fight that allowed the top three to get away. Uh, Butler back up on Peaches, speaking of which. Um, this should be the final lap that they're on here. And so Butler with one lap to try to make the difference. They really didn't catch up to Javi on that much. Like, Javi's not in that shot, so... The gap must have been quite large. Again, yeah, that is shocking, because uh, uh, they again, went way off. Mm -hmm. Again, we have the... Uh, it has to be said, unfortunately, that the uh, the race room to the spectator timing data is... Um, not reliable, so we, we really don't ever know how reliable the gaps being displayed on the screen actually are. So it's a bit of a problem. But so anyways, uh, John Picha still hanging on to fourth place there. There is your race winner as he comes across the line, Zach Hemstrom. This is his third win. He took one win both at Brands Hatch and at Zanvoort and adds to his collection here at Hockenheim. So congratulations, Zach. Congrats. Real good race. This Very is the good. best best result of the season for Gustav Ekstrom as he takes home second. And Javier Perez Torres will put himself in a better position to retain second in the standings with that third place ahead of John Picha and James Butler, the veteran crew who have been with the Academy since day one. Bit of a rough ride for Daniel Hernandez here. He's coming across the line in sixth. I'll be interested to see what he can do next race. Because uh, he had a couple of offs that we saw. And hopefully he can improve upon that in race number two. Yeah, he took himself out early right at the start, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Sliding off with the uh, hairpin. Oh, Rochelle, if she had another lap, might have been able to reel Toby Howard in. But as it stands, we'll take eighth place here in race one. But, you know, I would imagine she's going to walk away in race two. So it's a shame that she um, had that issue. It would have been fun to watch the four of them, five of them battle it out up front. Indeed, that could have really been interesting. But, uh, yeah. I mean, loss of force feedback is a, is a distinct problem. Oh, yeah. You can't. I mean, I can't drive without it. I've had it happen. I don't blame her for doing the smart thing and getting off the track. Indeed. So race two grid will be Joel Wilstein leading from pole for Michelle Guerin. It'll be Toby Howard, P3. Daniel Hernandez will start from P4. Then it is Butler, Picha, Torres, Ekstrom, and Hemstrom. Reverse grids are always fun to watch. As the grid joins up here, we're just waiting on Gustav, who's still in the lane. Come on, Gustav. Don't be shy. <laughs> Maybe the dog is out there or something. There we are. He's on the grid now. All right. Red lights, red lights, red lights. And we are off. Uh, here we go. And a good start from Rochelle Guerin. A really good start actually by Toby Howard. Jumped out from behind Joel Wilstein and is taking second place. Daniel Hernandez also gets past Wilstein. So not a very good start from the pole sitter. And in the background, uh, Ekstrom kind of probably ended up at the back of the pack. So not a great start. Oh, we got some little contact. Sho little shove in between Javi and Joel, but Javi makes the pass stick and moves into fourth position. 
so it is Rochelle Guerin already kind of pulling a Houdini up front. And there is yeah, Daniel, not surprising. There is Toby Howard and Daniel Hernandez. Now Hernandez is going to want to get past Howard ASAP because there's some fast cars coming up. I think he might have them right there. Howard is going to a little wide exiting. Indeed. Uh, no, it looks like Howard retained it somehow. He's still showing in second place. As James Butler cuts across Gustav Extra. Bit of a weird move there. So didn't work out. But, uh, Whoa, somebody taking a pretty wide line there. One of the ballast cars. Not sure if that was Extra or Butler. One of the Peaches that shuffled the back. So not a great first lap from John Peacha. Toby Howard still holding up Hernandez and Torres, and it's led Zach Hempstrom. Nice if I'm Javi, I'm Quite determined to get through these guys before Hemstrom does because absolutely. Oh, look at this! There we go. Got past Hernandez. Hemstrom though sticking with him like glue. Wow, that was some good driving right there. Hemstrom is on the move. Indeed, Hernandez made a mistake and paid for it with two spots. Heading into turn one, oh, this could be a side by side to turn one. A little bit of a nudge there by Hernandez. Hemstrom, but everyone held it, so that's fine. Torres got past Toby Howard into second place. And now it'll be Hemstrom's turn to line up a move on Toby. And uh, he gets him at turn two. Ekstrom is also in this mix. He's the ballast car there. The ballast, the white cars are always the ones carrying the ballast, by the way. We kind of worked that out at least, so there's a livery clue for ballast. I did not cars. realize that. I just want to say that's good driving for Toby. He was in a, a, a pretty high pressure situation there. And he uh, kept his cool. Very good driving, Toby. Oh, James Butler into the wall. And that'll mess up the front end for sure. Gustav Ekstrom looking to get past uh, Daniel Hernandez and does. That's for fifth place. He'll want to get past Howard ASAP because he, he really wants to be fighting it out with Hemstrom and Torres, and he's caught in some traffic. But yeah, I thought that was very good driving from Toby. He didn't make it too easy. He defended, he behaved like a racer, and but at the same time was a gentleman and left enough racing. That's, that's yeah, fantastic. absolutely. He has as much right as everybody else at this point on this track. And um, somebody just going oh, off there. Oh, that was the Hernandez. Hernandez. Yeah, yeah I, think, uh, I think Toby did a great job right there. Indeed. So Daniel Hernandez making a little bit of mistakes here in race two. Extra gets the move done on Toby. Uh, might have been some extra defensive things Toby could have done there, but I thought that uh, that was a, a, a well done move by Gustav as well. Quite a late, late commitment to it. Yeah, I, you know, I wonder how defensive Toby wants to be. That's true. He knows he's not really fighting Ekstrom, and that the guys he's really competing with are the Willsteins and the Hernandezes of the world. So, probably knows that he doesn't. Maybe a Peacher or a Butler he could fight with, but yeah. uh, the guys up ahead of him, it's just its just not his fight. So. And, you know, not that you want to obviously never pull over, just but sometimes it's easier to just let the car, the car's a second a lap faster than you, and it's, you know, three minutes into a race, just let him go. Absolutely. Because all you're going to do is force yourself into an error. Absolutely. There's, uh, there's such a thing as two defensive driving that is actually just letting Exactly. Or letting people behind you catch up more as you're not letting, as you're not running great right And you can see how much Ekstrom is legged out from it, so there's an obvious pace differential there. Yeah, Hernandez, you need to know Hernandez up on the tail of Joel Wilstein looking to the inside here into the Sud Curve. Oh no, that's not Sud Curve, that's, that's Mobile One. My, my apologies. Uh, Hernandez gets the job done and is up into seventh place. So it looks like Hernandez is des definitely um, testing the limits a little more this week. I think he's had two mistakes, right, Con uh, compared think, to a flawless I race think, weekend. I think we caught three mistakes, actually, already, so it's been a bit rough. Uh, Javi tried to close the door there on Zach, or Zach got a late run. We, we kind of missed the first part of that, so I'm un unable to be sure. But Hamstrom gets the job done. And uh, trying to get a look at how far Rochelle's up the, up the road, because we're being told 15 seconds, and, and that gap is growing, which means that that's, that's a timing error. Um, so we don't know what the gap is, but she is gone. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, it's always nice to be on camera, but when we can't see it, it's actually a really comforting feeling. <laughs> Indeed, she has, she has bolted. So Javier, can he come back? Can good stuff extra get in on this action? Well, this looks familiar. It's very familiar. Tremendously so. Now it's a battle for second instead of a battle for the lead, but it's a rematch of race one. Wait, Rochelle just does not want to play with these three guys, does she? <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently not. <laughs> she is. She has vanished. Javier Perez Torres representing the Overclock Racing Team. Trying to get himself up into second place here. Currently second in the standings behind the man in front of Zach Hemstrom. Might have lost James Butler and showing him as a lap down, and he did have that hard contact with the ball. Yeah, he had to destroy the front end of that thing. Could is be the um smart. with the race room update or is the damage model is much more extreme now, correct? A little bit more, yes. Uh, it's a little bit. It's definitely obviously you got the suspension damage being entered into the equation. I actually destroyed my. I, I was doing a, a practice race to see if the ADAC problem with the grids for Wednesday had been fixed. And uh, it was the most, it was the worst thing ever because it was me, Ayrton, Cole, and Javi on track trying to figure some things out. And just, oh, Gustav trying to shove his way through. So, I'm kind of breaking the explanation here while he goes side by side with Javi. Looks like he's got it, but of course, this is the part where maybe that 100 kilos is going to work against him. He's got to take that in depth defensive line into the shortcut and see if he can make the game. And it looks like he will. We ended up with like a drive through penalty and a busted suspension off of like just not even racing. It was so terrible. <laughs> oh, Javi! Oh. He was a little late on the brakes, but he did the right thing. He straightened the car out, made sure he didn't take um, extra amount, and just <laughs> had a reasonable recovery too. Yeah. So some, some good things there with the bat. John Peacher there in fifth place. So, John Peacher having another good race. It looks like um, that's at least the second, if not the third time, I've seen Javi try to go um, on the brakes on the inside and um, either make contact or a little too late on the brakes. I think maybe it's just a brake pressure situation. He needs to sort out. Hmm. We'll see. Well, I would assume he's running the 100% brake pressure. Ooh, bit of a. Bit yeah, of a I'm saying. Uh, I wonder if he's locking the front. If he just. Mm -hmm not modulating the brakes enough. I can see that's what he, be, he, he keeps going for that inside move, but he's under the brakes is when he's losing it. it. Looks like we've lost Toby Howard from the race, unfortunately. It looks like Butler, uh, on the bright side, it looks like Butler is actually still circulating, just uh, not really in, co in competition with anyone. Um, mm, that's painful, he's probably got a sideways wheel. Uh, on the bright side, I mean, James Butler, P2 on, on the grid for race three. That could be interesting. The Stoff Project. Look at that. No wonder why she's out in front so far. <laughs> she has been working very closely with Mike Stoff. Now, if there's one guy at ESR to choose, she sure picked the right one. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And, uh, of course, her dad will have been working with her on some of her stuff uh, when he's been able to. Uh, she's... She's in a much better position to race this week because, of course, at Zambor, she was she was sitting on two cushions on her dad's stool uh, in his workshop trying to reach the uh, the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that certainly uh, cannot lead to a comfortable racing experience. Indeed. Uh, Javi is right back on Gustav. Looks so. like extra. I think, might have been yeah, off track like, for a second Yeah, there. definitely. The pace differential there suggests a definite uh, problem for extra, and... Javi is back into third place. Let's see if he can hold it this time. I think Hemstrom's largely locked up second place. He's not the type to make a large mistakes. I think the top two are probably locked up, barring some oddities. But we got a battle for third place that I think we'll probably stick with here for the last five minutes. Or not. Well, back to Rochelle, getting herself on camera. Eh, not that far ahead. Hemstrom is within the shot, but I don't think the pace differential between the two really is going to lead to much of a fight there. No, they've both been consistent. I'm not expecting any drama up front. 
Avi still fighting hard against Gustav. Doing a good job. Doing a great job. As they head into the shortcut. Avi takes the defensive line here. And man, guess Gustav got a great run there. But yeah. I just don't think he threw it in. He's got the, he's he's got, got the right he's line. He's got the inside line into Mercedes. Bullies oh, Javi out a little bit. A little bit of contact. Javi is off the track again. I'm going to throw like a tiny bit of shade uh, at extra there. I think he did cut across Javi a little bit, but that is definitely a mistake by Javi Perez Torres. It's a mistake by Javi for sure, but yeah, Ekstrom never should have swung his car to the um, outside edge of the track like that, bit, directly in front of his bumper. Yeah. That's, that's bit, what called bit, for. Bit of a bully move that definitely puts you in what I like to call the danger zone, which yeah, is not a place you want to be. He 100% set himself up for contact. He just happened to get luckier than uh, Javi did in that particular instance. I mean, you can't swing in front of a car into the braking zone and not expect some kind of contact. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's, that's something you only do with a driver that you 100% uh, have confidence will not kill you. Yeah, and then you have a 50% chance of it not happening. Indeed, and even if, yeah, even if you have that confidence, there's a solid chance it still happens. But he had so much room on the inside, his line, he, there was just no reason for it. That's the other thing, yeah, you can maintain, because of course you want to go kind of wide into the next curve as well. So I, yeah, I would have to say I, I cannot co-sign on that defensive move by Gustav. Don't know if it would be a penalty, um, but... Uh, Gustav, a little bit, a, a little bit more racing. As uh, Javi trying to go around the outside of John Peachy here, trying to replicate actually the move that Extra just pulled on him. I think that's Peachy trying to take the inside on Javi. He came out of nowhere. Well, Peachy overtook him when he went off the track, so Peachy was ahead. Oh, I missed that. Indeed. So that that uh, that is actually, I think Javi just basically taking the move that Extra pulled on him and putting it on John. Oh, then nice work, Javi. Bit, John, he's sticking to it though. Yeah, a bit rough there. Over to Rochelle. No offense, Rochelle, but we'd probably prefer to see that battle. Yeah. 35-7, uh, new fastest lap of the, of the race for her. Uh oh, Peach back in front. Peach is back in front, so it looks like he got the better of Mercedes, or pardon me, Mobile One. And now we are in the Sud Curve. Oh, that's very wide from John, but he's going to be able to carry a lot of speed off of that. That might save the position. I feel like that should should have set him up for a better run, but Javi's right there. Now this is this is dangerous. And side by side into turn. Okay, Javi, Javi, better discretion, better part of Valley there. I think. For yeah, Javi. he did the right thing. Gets gets out of it. We know that like this is a big result for John Peacher right now. He's a guy who would probably like to get himself a little bit closer to the front of the standings tables. So, if you're Javi and you, you picked up a big chunk of points over your main rival, Rochelle Guerin, in race one, probably worthwhile to sit a little bit behind John for the time being. But I hope to see him make another attack. He is a little bit behind me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got like you said, you got to make points and be smart. Uh, I am loving what I'm seeing from Peacha today, though. Indeed, John, John Beecher with a very solid effort so far. All that time working with the three amigos with him, Toby Howard, and Dixon Hurst paying off. Absolutely. So we'll see. You get, okay, so Javi's going to have one lap after this as they enter the mobile. He's certainly going to try and make a move. There's no question about it. Yeah. He now may be in the turn now, two. I'm not sure if turn two is the spot because it looks like Javi's not one of the faster guys into turn two. Just like kind of, uh, I get that feeling, but that's not a strong point of the track for him. I would say his best bet might be to try and stick close through turn two and through the parabola. Well, the John, shortcut. Or John, yeah. yeah, the shortcut was what I was going for. But uh, right there, he took it at sud curve and is back into fourth place. Yeah, but Javi's still in a bad position. There's another, there's a few spots like this. Let's see, John's gonna get the run on him here. Um, Suzuka reminds me, there's a that super fast left in the back half of Suzuka. If you're taking the inside line, you're actually hurting yourself, and that that's the exact same type of corner right there. Yeah, 
through turn two. John gets the uh, spot back. That's kind of what I meant there. Is it seemed like John was the stronger of the two in turn two. That's why I thought that Javi really wouldn't have much of a chance there. So Javi's best chance is coming up here. It's a shortcut. Can he get the job done? He's a little He's bit far behind. And uh, John did kind of overcook it a little bit, so that's opened the door. John's looking in his rearview mirror and trying to protect his Indeed. line. Just, John, just race, John. John tries to take the inside line into, oh, James Butler. There's his kind of messed up car. Looks like he's hit the pit lane, actually. Uh, no, no, maybe not. Maybe not. Get back to the race. Get back to the battle for, for, for fourth place. I can say that John Peacha is still... Oh, Javi's Hobby. through! Javi's through! <laughs> oh, come on! Come on, cameraman! What the hell? Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, no offense to James Butler, but James, you ain't racing anyone right now. <laughs> oh, Peacha got it back! Come on, go back to, go back to the fight for fourth! <laughs> it's, actually, it's comical. Go back! Go back! Uh, Javi's down to six now. Oh, right? Javi! Right what, Javi into the wall. That was Javi in the background. No. That was Javi in the background. He's behind no. Daniel Hernandez now. Oh. All right. Well, Rochelle Guerin gets some measure of revenge in race two, taking the victory from Zach Hemstrom, Gustav Ekstrom, John Picho. Solid uh, performance from Daniel Hernandez. Sixth place going to Javi. Feels like Javi probably deserved a bit more. But, uh, yeah. That is sometimes how it goes as Joel Wilson will bring in seventh place uh, ahead of uh, James Butler, who's driving a damaged car and the unfortunately out of the race to buy his house. Hopefully Toby makes the grid for race three. Hopefully that's hopefully it wasn't a technical issue. Fastest lap to Zach Hemstrom, a 35-5. Rochelle did a 35-6, so very, very close. Will we finally get the showdown between those two in race number three? Yeah, this is going to be it, right? I mean, Garen, Hemstrom, and Ekstrom will all be starting in the same location this time. So, uh, Good opportunity for Javi. I mean, try to look on the bright side here. He is starting from P4 after that accident, so has some level of an opportunity. James Butler, though, is perhaps the guy to look at. P2 on the grid? For James Butler, reverse grid. But, yeah, but Butler's destroyed his car two races in a row. Um, did he destroy it in the first one? I thought he. I didn't. I don't think he did. In the first oh one. no, no, you're he was right. fighting with John for fourth you're place. Right. Sorry, James. You know, being a little hard on James. That's that's my job. <laughs> I I know. I'm just not defending him. Uh, Joel Wilstein off to another bit of a bad start. We're definitely gonna have to work with Joel. On that's two, yeah, that's two races in a row that he's just been. Small. Put it in first gear, floor the gas, and wait for the light to go green. Javi up to P2. He got the better of James Butler at the start. Toby Howard in the lead. Yeah. Toby on fire up there. Dude, he's got it. He got a great start. Toby's usually not great off the line, but he's definitely found something in these cars now. So that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, like we saw, we were talking about how great he looked in race two. Let's see if he can um, hold off this this group for a few laps here. Uh, I don't think so. He That's got, Javi. He's got a little, <laughs> this is the outside. Javi Perez Torres making the move. Zach Hemstrom is already up from eighth place all the way to third. Jeez. Well, you know Javi's got to be. All right. This is it, right? This is the one. This is this is the chance. This is the golden opportunity. Time to take that lemon that was that contact at the end of race two and turn it into lemonade. With the He's got and he's got a great blocker in Toby Howard currently in second place. We know Toby can be a, has 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 found a lot more confidence lately, and he's fighting for position. Although Zach Hemstrom just got around there, I really got to stop complimenting Toby because it, seems, it <laughs> seems like bad things happen. <laughs> oh, I think Toby uh, moved out of the way there. Extra was that through. Butler was sliding in? Uh, yeah, ooh, that was Butler. You're right, you're right. I thought I was thinking Ekstrom, but it is Butler. Whoa, speaking of Ekstrom, a bit of a late dive there on Hernandez. Mm, yeah. Hernandez giving him a bump in return. I mean, the space was there, but it was aggressive. It was aggressive, but he wants to keep with the lead group. Close chance here. Rochelle is up at up behind that group, too. Toby. <laughs> that was a little dangerous between Toby and uh, Hernandez there. Mm-hmm. Could have been a moment. No, 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 no foul on either driver, but it could have been a moment. 
Did something happen uh, at the start that Rochelle is back in seventh while um, uh, Hemstrom made his way to second? Nothing or was that, it just nothing that I noticed. It, it, it just it looked like honestly just Hemstrom got a really good start and just made some nice nice moves. Like it just seems like Hemstrom had a great start. And Rochelle just kind of had. I mean, she's made up two places, but definitely get one more. Yeah. It's amazing what just, you know, your car in one position different, how, how the openings just do or don't work for you, you know? Sometimes things just seem to constantly block you everywhere you go. Like John Peach, it looks like, got off to a pretty poor start. He's at the back of the pack. Didn't look like he went off the track or anything. Just you know, must have maybe just got boxed in at the wrong moment. Garen's up to six. She got past uh, Hernandez. And she's about to go through Howard. Yep, she's on his inside through Sachs. Gets the job done. I think Sachs was one of her preferred overtaking opportunities, I believe, she was thinking. So, that's good. Uh, Battle of the Ballasted Cars. Ekstrom on the tail of James Butler. Looking down the inside and turn. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, they did it. They did it. <laughs> that's that's, that's uh, amazing. That, that's a, that's <laughs> a, happened there. That is a butt clench moment if I've ever seen one. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I should say good job or you guys are nuts. Uh, Javi Perez Torres has a problem in his rearview mirror, and that problem na his name is Zach Hemstrom. Javi needs to look forward. All he needs Absolutely. to do is just drive. Just drive it. Just drive it, bud. I always say it. Like, people people comment about me being a difficult guy to overtake, and I keep saying it. I'm really not doing anything. I'm just driving. That's all it is. Right, so Daniel Hernandez is next up in the tow. Oh, Toby lost oh, the back end. Hey, nice good save, though. Good recovery. Good recovery, even if he's going to lose that spot. And possibly one to John Peach as well. But you know what? Like taking Toby for example, to, if we'd gone to last season, he would have totally lost the car there instead of maintaining the car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it sounds silly, but just letting off the throttle and getting regaining control, he lost one second versus fifteen if he would have spun it out into the grass, right? I mean. He's looked really good tonight. Oh, Rochelle Guerin a little bit off the track in the background there. But, uh, kept, uh, kept momentum by the looks of it. She's still on the tail of James Butler. Man, we ain't gonna fill this, uh, fix this timing screen. Indeed. Javier Perez Torres still leading, but he's got, he's got problems. He's got problems, I think it would be safe to say right now. In the form of championship leader, Zach Hemster, who put up a 35-4 last time around. Jesus. All right, so he's a little quicker, but you know, you know the passing zones, right? So, uh oh, Rochelle. Rochelle off over the there? track. That is, I believe, where she had her accident with Butler and broke the suspension. <sighs> Terrible luck. Yeah, look how bad that car is grabbing. Uh, so unfortunate. I mean, in fairness, we went over it in the uh, coaches thing, and uh, the contact was her fault. So. In, in that regard, uh, the wa the wages of, of uh, slightly reckless driving is uh, is broken suspension. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Uh, John Peach off the track in the background there, and now fighting with the crabbing car of Rochelle. Come on, John. Come on. <laughs> I recall the incident. Man. She's got no suspension, John. You can't let her get away <laughs> with that. Yeah, he doesn't know that. He sees the name and is like, oh boy, I'm going to get out of her way. So I believe she's going to make her way into the pit lane if memory serves. Spoiler. She's going to finish about two laps down. Yeah, look how, look how uncomfortable that car is. Yeah, it's moving all over the place. Diving into the pits. Now. There we go. She's into the pit lane. Her second visit to the pits. Uh, I mean... It's a destruction of her own creation. You felt bad for her in race one, but race three, admittedly, it was at least her fault that uh, the things didn't go her way. But uh, 
definitely a lot of missed opportunities here at Hockenheim for the championship contender for Michelle Garrett. Yeah, I mean, like you said, race one was out of her control. That's a hardware failure. So one mistake out of three races. Yeah, we all do it. Mm -hmm. Still does need to work on her patience a bit. I, got, I did the coaching video earlier today, of course. I think I kind of emphasized that. And I also kind of emphasized some things about James Butler that that incident kind of is indicative of. Um, it's not his. It's it wasn't his fault in that occasion. It's just kind of a uh, a pattern of things that I would, I would like to see altered. Patience is um, it's, it's the hardest thing to come by. You know, you feel like you, you got to get by, got to get by. If you actually look at the clock, there's so much time. Even on a 15 minute sprint, there's just so much time. You know, if it takes you two laps, just you know, a, a lot of times I won't even make a move. You just you just put your nose somewhere, and the other car will freak out and make a mistake. It just makes life easy. Well, I mean, you even look at that. This is a perfect example. She tried to rush the overtake and ended up with a broken suspension. So, I mean, what what would have been worse? Let's say she even got stuck behind Butler for the rest of the race and finished in fifth place. That would be better than what she's getting now. Exactly. Still a much better finish. And Zach Hemstrom with the overtake in a turn two there. Javi is not terribly strong into that second turn. I must say. Now, he's slowing down too much. Um, it looks like he's trying to um, uh, get the car pointed in full throttle. I mean, I think maybe it would work if it was the GP layout. This is probably carrying a little bit more speed, but with this shortcut, it's just not long enough. He is strong into the shortcut, though, which is a bit weird that he's... Well, may, actually, maybe you're onto something right there. He's he's carrying more speed out of the corner, but he's leaving himself very vulnerable to overtake. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hemstrom, unfortunately, is just as strong into the shortcut mm -hmm. and everywhere else, so it's going to be tough at this point. So, famili familiar faces in the top three. Hemstrom, Perez, Torres, and Hemstrom again. Fourth, Hernandez, Howard, Picha, and Wilstein, and then of course the lapped car of Michelle Guerin, who we know will not quit, so she will be back out on track to salvage the points at least. <laughs> it's always good to see. All I'm hoping to see is Javi finish race three with his front bumper intact. That is that's Yeah, race two hope. got race two got real hairy at the end, so let's hope let's 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 see if we can get a calmer, more consistent Javi. Uh, let's see if we can see if Rochelle is still in the pit lane. Yes, she is. But she is pointed in the right direction that indicates she's going to rejoin the race. She's just still getting the suspension fixed. Which, if we're being honest, probably wouldn't be possible in real life. So, <laughs> Yeah, right. I'm curious to see um, if Ekstrom's going to catch Javi. I'm not sure that um, Javi's going to be able to, to keep in Hemstrom's toe, but it looks like Extra might be getting a little closer. I mean, in fairness to Hoppy, though, he's actually down into the 35s with his lap time. You saw his fast lap there was a 35.9, so he's getting quicker. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting yeah. away from him, but Hemstrom definitely has a, a slight advantage. Yeah, doing like 35.4s out there. There is uh, the only person here today that I think on a pace battle could have kept with him is maybe Michelle. And even that, I'm not entirely certain is the case. Yeah, so I've been in Hobby's position, uh, un unfortunately, more times than I would like to admit, uh, chasing one of our other ESR drivers. And it gets to a point where you just know that you can't keep pace, so all you need to do is just stay solid, not crash, and watch the guy behind you. But watch the timing, just to make sure you're not making any mistakes. Absolutely. John Peach has overtaken... Uh, Toby Howard this lap and he's up to sixth place. So let's see here. We're going past the pit lane again. Let's see if there's a car still in the pits. Uh we get a shot. Doesn't look like we're gonna get the right camera angle. Uh, as a little little wave to the crowd there from race leader Zach Hemstrom, which but he's gotta be careful about because that can damage the suspension. I was just going to say, these BMWs are getting up. Oh, no, Javi. No, Javi. Well, the bumper's still intact, so Yeah, it didn't, didn't hit anything, but he's going to lose a spot to Gustav Ekstrom there. Looks like he's going to rejoin ahead of Butler, so it looks like Butler's falling quite a ways off this fight. 
All right, well, it's the two Swedes out front now. Hamstrom and Extra. I think somebody needs some ballast. I mean, it's getting to that point. Um, he was really, he was really dominant at Zanport. He's doing it again here. Looks like he's going to pick up a second win of the day. So definitely might be a, might be a call for like a 50 kilo or something. Although in fairness, Rochelle out qualified him. Her pace is very similar, so it'd be hard to say that he would get ballast without her getting ballast as well. Mm, I mean, it's kind of a weird thing. Like, the problem is you have Zanford in between here. Like, she out-qualified him at Brands Hatch. Did a fantastic job there. Did a fantastic job here. Race results notwithstanding. Um, oh, no! Oh, no! Whoa! Hamstrom's lost it! A rare Ekstrom's going to take the lead! We were talking about how he was going to take this. Oh, you might as well lock it up and throw away the key, and, and he spun it. This is why you keep racing. This is why you keep your head down. Opportunities will present themselves. Absolutely. Maybe you back at the 95%, but you keep going. I mean, like, think about it. Two laps ago, Gustav Ekstrom was in third place, nowhere near the lead. Probably could have just packed it in, kept going, and now he's suddenly in the lead of this race. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy to think about. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of waiting for a battle between Peach and Hernandez there for fifth place. Kind of hoping we see that play out. But uh, we'll stick with the battle for the lead right now. Zach Hemstrom now trailing fellow countryman Gustav Ekstrom. Whoa. And, oh, getting maybe a little rattled. Yeah, little he's, rattled. he's on the throttle way too hard. He's either going to have to uh, watch that that right foot or he's gonna have to turn his traction control up a little bit and and i have to say like again is the guy who doesn't teach you how to go fast but kind of like uses a wealth of real life motor racing knowledge i don't know why he's trying so desperately to catch extra because you think about it you think about his scenario here like let's let's look at how this round has gone for extra. one race one second race two currently second race three looks pretty safe although joel wilstein battling with toby howard give them their due hopefully we get to see that play out uh, but anyways to complete my thing his his rivals are javi who's back in third place and had that bad second race right his other rival is rochelle who's had a terrible terrible weekend like the win in the the win in round two race two fantastic but the force beat back issue in race one turned into an eighth place this is going to turn into a ninth place because of suspension damage like i i have to wonder if like a little bit of like long-term strategic thinking there should have overrode Zach Hemstrom's desire to get right back on this stuff extra. Like he's, in yes. a, he's a great place championship. Wise. In a perfect world, you are correct. But when you're behind the wheel on the track and you're three minutes away from the win and you make a mistake, all you're thinking is, I want to win. I want you that get, spot you, back. You get that. If not red mist, then the, the orange mist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're mad at yourself, and you know you have the pace. Say, okay. We want to win. So we have, a bit of a, uh, we have a bit of a potentially ugly scenario here because that's Rochelle Guerin. She's a lap down. That's James Butler she's racing with. They're the ones that had contact that caused her suspension. Break. So... Tell me, Paul, what would you recommend to James Butler right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no offense to Rochelle, but uh, I would do everything in my power to get away from her as fast as possible. <laughs> I, I, would, I, would, I would, if I'm James Butler, just be like, no, please, please, after you, please. <laughs> just, yeah, just that actually me. might be the smart move right there. Like you said, there's no position change, and you can just breathe. Side of relief. You can breathe easy. Like I'm not. I'm not going to suggest that Rochelle would do anything on sporting or anything of course like not. that. Of course not. But that that always has to be the, the the lizard brain in your in your mind has to be going. What is the chances of a possible ugly moment here? I think it, everybody's going to safely cross the line. Yes. I think. Yes. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Uh, really solid effort by Daniel Hernandez. Fifth place. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Hernandez looked good. Uh, there was some, some, honestly, really good driving today. Peachy looked great. Howard did some um, awesome stuff out there. I'm I also, impressed with the actual also, post -racing. I also have to admit that this was, I think, the first ESR Academy round that had no penalties. 
Um, Rochelle? Uh, I have gone with the uh, pledge of, like, uh, how should I put this? To use the American quote, uh, Fifth Amendment, right to not self incriminate yourself. <laughs> okay, no um, penalties it is. Well, no, and, and, and to be honest, that's something I've always applied when doing stewarding because I, I want to encourage people to report things. And if you're like reporting things and then suddenly you're getting penalties, it's just going to possibly work against that like flow. Um, I look at I look at reports maybe in a different way than everyone else. I don't know. Perhaps you can you can tell me. Um, but I look at it as an important important method of uh, of behavioral correction. And if it doesn't happen, people don't learn. I've seen this like in real life motorsports, and it seems to translate to sim motorsports. Like a lot of things about real life motorsports, actually. Um, you have to deal with the fact that um, drivers are very... They see the world in a really interesting light. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and only and they see it in that particular light, it seems, right? Exactly, exactly. Like, the the best example I've always had is that in F1, there was an incident between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton where Vettel just very unsportingly smashed him in the back under a safety car. And they called him in for a, for a, for a stop-go penalty. And his response over the radio, radio and the, is, what is the penalty for? They're like, dangerous driving. He's like, when did I do the dangerous driving? And it's like, this is the mind of a race car driver here. <laughs> like, it just, yeah, it's just, it just, it honestly, it has to be brought to their attention before they're actually going to ever, ever really address it. And it, it does carry over into sim racing, in my experience. I agree 100%. I mean, you have a lot more um, uh, experience with the stewarding than I do, but I know I've had a few conversations and, you know, trying to explain what seems obvious to everybody else to the guilty party sometimes is a little uh, mind-boggling, we should say. All right, so I'll give a quick rundown of the standings. As of three rounds, we're off to Suzuka for a doubleheader next, the East and West Circuit layouts. Zach Hemstrom leads the championship with 158 points from Javier Perez Torres' 126. Rochelle Garen's on 117. 90 points for James Butler, 75 for John Picha, 58 for our recent, our most recent winner, Gustav Ekstrom. Ekstrom, of course, would be a little bit higher, but of course he missed the Brands Hatch round and then also had 30 points worth of penalties at Sandvoort. Wasn't a great round, so good to see him get a triple podium day and keep it clean. Fantastic work. Uh, Daniel Hernandez on 41 points. Douglas DeGroat on or 51 for Hernandez, pardon me. 41 for Douglas DeGroat. 36 for Scott Greenfield, who was unfortunately missing today as he was in Poland. And Joel Wilstein with 34 points rounds off the top 10. Um, just a quick note. Uh, there are a couple of drivers that I'm going to be contacting about perhaps being excluded from the Academy if we don't start getting some signouts from them. So... Check your inboxes, boys. There, there, there may be, there may be a little bit of a whack coming. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I mean, you know, it's not that many spaces available. Um, if you do are able to get in here, you really should try and show up for them. Plus, Absolutely. it's great racing. And I think it's also something that you're going to have to get used to in ESR a lot more now. There's going to be um, pre-booking for the 3D Speed Series now, with the fact that we're getting full grids. There's going to be pre-booking with the uh, multi-class GT3, GT4 events. So it's really just something you really need to get in into the handle phone because the admins are taking a very dim view to uh, unreliable drivers. So keep that in mind, everybody. Uh, any final thoughts that you have here, Paul? Um, no, overall, honestly, I was just really impressed with the uh, racing today. Uh, a lot of moves were, um, were just really well done from both parties. A lot of side by side stuff. I thought it was I thought it was great. This is exactly what we're hoping to see in the academy. Indeed. I was very, very happy with this round. A little bit disappointed that we didn't get a proper showdown between Hamstrom and Garen, like race long battle. But uh as an instructor, I can't be I could not be happier after this round. It was it was great to watch. Yeah, maybe we'll get it uh when we come back. Right? Indeed, indeed. We will be back at Hockenheim for round nine of the 12 round championship so that'll be interesting we got suzuka doubleheader next and then laguna seca and then it's back to doing everything again with the chance to earn extra points for the most improved drivers i'm looking forward to that 
All right, signing off at that point. Uh, catch us with the ACC series this weekend. That's going to be great. And the GT3, GT4 series is coming to you, everybody. The Enduro series, multi-class with us and uh, the proud fans of the, the Fran Club, as they are called, joining us on the grid. And we will be at Indianapolis this Saturday. Get ready for that. That's going to be a that's going to be a dope race, I think. Yeah, I better practice. I'm not even sure I'm familiar with the track. Indeed, I'm gonna I'm gonna get on that uh, probably Thursday, Friday. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be working on Hockenheim for the 3D Speed Series. But uh, after that, uh, I promised Javi that I'd, I'd get some track time with him. We're gonna we're gonna work the BMW GT or the the, uh, the M4 BMWs around the track. That's gonna oh, be great. Oh, sweet! Yeah, I picked the uh, C7 based on um, absolutely nothing. So <laughs> hopefully, I like it. Um, you've liked it in the past, have you not? I'm pretty sure you've tried it. No, I've always hated the C7. I like the C6 or the Z06. Oh. But uh, I think I did one lap or two laps with the new physics and was like, oh, this is fun. So, you know, hey, all right. give it a we'll shot. See, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's all fun, right? All right. Thanks for joining us for this commentary, guys. Peace. Later. Love and death metal. <laughs> hmm.